In this video, I want to show you a tool that will make Spring Boot rebuilding and restarting during development a lot more pleasant. First off, I want to show how the reloading experience works in Quarkus so you can see what I'm aiming for. So over here, I have a simple Quarkus application. So let me start the development web server first. And now let's hit an API endpoint in the Quarkus application. Now let's try to make a small change to the API. And now let's try to hit the endpoint again. So notice how the connection to the web server didn't fail even though the Quarkus application is still restarting. The development web server holds the request until the Quarkus application is ready to receive the request. So now let's compare this with the Spring Boot experience. Here I have a simple Spring Boot application. So let's start the Spring Boot application and let's start the continuous background build process. Now let's test out an API endpoint. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the Quarkus application. I'm going to make a small source code change and then attempt to access the API while the server is restarting. So notice here that we get a connection error because while the application is restarting, the web server isn't available until the Spring Boot application has completely started up. Now, of course, once the Spring Boot application has started up, we can access the API as we normally do. My solution to this problem is to introduce a reloading development web server that sits in front of the Spring Boot application and triggers a rebuild whenever it detects a source code change. And then whenever there's a request that comes in while the server is restarting, it will pause those requests until the Spring Boot application completely starts up. Once it has completely started up, then it will forward those requests to the Spring Boot application. Because that development web server is always alive between restarts, any API clients should never get a connection error. So let's go ahead and start that development web server. Okay, so this additional web server runs on port 9000. Let's change our API client accordingly. Now, let's make a small change to the source code, and we should see that the request pauses until the Spring Boot application starts up again after the rebuild completes. Okay, so let's see that again. Let's make another source code change, and Let's see the API client pause while the Spring Boot server is restarting. Let me know whether you found this useful. I've included a link to this tool in this video's description, along with instructions on how to use it. Thanks so much for watching.